Hey, what's up you amazing hackers? Hope you're all doing well today. Welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to talk about the OWASP Top 10 API Security Risks 2023 and most of all how you can use the new bug bounty adventures because there's some stuff in here that's very useful to you and there's some stuff in here that you shouldn't even be looking at. But what is what? Today we're going to unravel the mystery, so join me as we take the journey into the unknown. Take the plunge with me, Amazing Hackers, into the OWASP API Top 10. Let's talk about the first item, broken object level authorization. Now this is a type of broken access control. Broken access control occurs quite often, as you can see here is the first one, it's the vulnerability vulnerability category. So what falls under this? Broken object level authorization. Does IDOR ring a bell to anybody? There's an object involved. There is a broken of authorization involved. So this is just gonna be your typical IDOR. How does that translate to APIs? On APIs, every fucking thing with an identifier, try a CRUD action on with an account that you don't have access to that data normally. So if I have an account and I have an invoice, you're going to take a different account authorization headers and you're going to do every create, read, update and delete action there. When it comes to broken authentication, this is more like your SQL injections, your um, forgot password mechanisms, basically anything that has to do with authentication, logging in. It is useful to a degree, but don't go looking for things like brute forcing and whatever, because often it's not really accepted and brute forcing an application and bug bounties. You'd have to have a reasonable suspicion before you're able to request a brute force testing and then only can you launch your attack. So it's a little bit different there. With broken object property level authorization, this is an important one. Mass assignment used to be in the previous one and also excessive data exposure, but they've combined that into one. It's basically, sometimes you have your invoice, your object, invoice ID equals 12, but that invoice has different properties. And sometimes you don't have an IDOR on the entire invoice, but only on a property of that object. Can also be if I have a account type when I save my account and I shouldn't normally be able to change this. That's also broken property, ob broken object property level authorization. Unrestricted resource consumption isn't that useful. You just try to ignore it. It's things for like, for example, if you have a server and that server uses certain resources, you can spin up so many processes that those resources are full, but also things like, for example, email, SMS, phone calls, biometrics validation, stuff like that, not super useful to you. Your broken function level authorization is your typical broken X control in your um, your vertical privilege escalation so horizontal is your idors your vertical is I have a low privileged account and I'm going to try actions which normally would require higher privileges with that low privileged authorization header if you're looking for tips on this check out the video on my channel of authorize it's a great tool it's totally free and burp sweet so you can use it as you please but it's a great resource for helping you find Find these two, your broken function level authorization, your broken object level authorization. The unrestricted, the, uh, the unrestricted access to sensitive business flows. I wouldn't go too far into this. Um, there, you would have to know a lot about the business functionality. That's one thing, but it's more like, um, for example, in this case, they, they give you the example of buying a ticket, posting a comment without compensating for how the functionality could harm the business if it's used excessively in an automated manner. Ticket scalping is a great example of this, for example. Server side request forgery is a great one because you can get to internal servers. For example, a lot of these APIs work in a microservice architecture where you shouldn't be able to normally access the internal APIs themselves, only the API gateway, but through SSRF, you might be able to access them anyway, and you might be able to surpass some security validations or even some sanitizations. 
As for security misconfigurations, you would be better at this we're looking things like in the cloud and there you have a lot of misconfigurations on API level as well, but it's just a very, very, very broad term, of course. So like what falls under security misconfigurations is quite a lot. So that's why I say it's not really that useful to focus on. If you have other things like broken access control to focus on heavily, since it is in the top number one, you have it in number three and you have it in number five. So it takes up three of the five top spots. And that is something that I would go for first then. That would also mean that I'm looking for bug bounty programs, which specifically allow this, which allow me to make my own accounts with different user types, admin or regular user, or they give them to me. That's also possible. Improper inventory management, just don't bother about this. It's like, oh, I have all of these APIs. Do I know what versions there are, etc.? Do I know the length of all of these APIs need to be inventorized? It's often not happening. Any unsafe consumption of APIs. The thing here is that an API might ingest data as well. So you send the data to process. For example, I'm sending in a CSV file and it's processing it, but it thinks that since it's coming from another API, that it's pretty, it's okay to be unsafe, if you know what I mean. All right, my friends, I hope this was useful to you. I hope that you've gained some practical tips from this. Let me know in the comments below what you tend to focus on when you're hacking APIs and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you very much, amazing hackers, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.